In regards to my quiet voice, I'm lowering it down for the sake of not waking up the fluffy butt club. You don't want to wake them up. Trust me. As of late, I've been looking for a time capsule of some of the golden years of PC gaming. CRPG legends like Baldur's Gate and Planescape Torment, dungeon action RPGs like Diablo 1, and my favourite, the late 90s to early 2000s period of FPS gaming. This period has some of my all-time favourites like The First Quake, Half-Life 1 and 2, Doom 3, Fear, Unreal Tournament 99, Counter-Strike 1.6, etc. I could go on and on, but instead, I'm going to rewind the clock a little bit further back. Let's say... 93. Now this was the year where Doom was released. A game often considered the most influential shooter ever made due to its addicting gunplay, its fantastic enemy variety with dynamic attacks and functions, its kick-ass music and much more. It had everything that constituted a fun shooter and some of the most extensive modding ever seen in any shooter today. Wolfenstein 3D was the blueprint for Doom that in turn would take it to newer heights, taking everything it did but better in every way conceivable. And throughout the 90s, other shooters would also follow Doom's formula, leading to Doom clones like Heretic being released, along with added improvements to the engine. But in the same year of 93, another shooter came out, called Ken's Labyrinth, a Wall 3D inspired shooter made by Ken Silverman, that would become the catalyst for an engine that would spawn some of the greatest shooters ever made, that have not only stood the test of time, but are still beloved by so many old school shooter fans. From the carcass of Ken's Labyrinth, its meat and bones would be morphed like Wallace from the movie Tusk, into a game engine that would rival Doom's engine and even exceed it in certain categories throughout the 90s. This is the build engine. After making Ken's Labyrinth, Ken Silverman's ambitions grew to that of wanting to create his own spin on the engines made for Doom and Wolfenstein 3D. Mind you too that this was in the early 90s, not a lot of people even knew how to develop a 3D game engine since what we see today was being implemented in a very limited capacity back then due to limiting hardware as well as the knowledge base that we have now for coding not being as prominent as it was back then as well as the games available today. Ken Silverman was able to do it at the age of 18 which is honestly insane given how early on 3D development was at the time and how he, for the most part, was doing it by himself. This engine was being created during his contract with the company Apogee, who wanted him to create a 3D engine for games, and the first attempt would go as far back as March 1993. And I say for the most part, because John Carmack, believe it or not, also had some creative input on the build engine as well. The conversation between the two yielded advice from Carmack himself on how to improve the build engine in the form of sectors, which was what Carmack had used for the Doom engine. As a result, Ken would take this advice and rewrite the engine to implement the same idea, and it made a huge difference in the display of 3D, leading to many other features that the build engine was known for, such as voxels, slopes, room over room, translucence, network support, and more that came later on in future builds. In 95, the first build would be finally usable for game projects, which Capstone Software would use for two in particular, and since the engine was licensed to other companies, we would see their own adaptations of the engine in their games. Witchhaven and William Shatner's Tech War being made by Capstone, one being a medieval fantasy FPS game with melee weapons, magic spells and bows, and the other being a sci-fi FPS where anyone could be killed, but you'd get an earful from Shatner himself for killing innocent civilians. In retrospect, they're both incredibly janky, with the latter being panned to death by many old-school FPS fans. Their display of 3D was not unlike that of the Doom engine, 
but its differences would be more noticeable in what would be considered the golden period of the build engine, where three of the best shooters ever released for it would be born. Duke Nukem 3D, Blood, and Shadow Warrior. They not only married their code with the build engine source code, but would really bring out the best of the build engine, with its lighting, textures, level geometry, the use of teleport prompts that would make traveling between sectors so seamless like it is in modern 3D games, great use of applying height to give off a more effective 3D display than that of which Doom had at the time. Explosions and destructible environments were another bonus, and genuinely amazing to see at the time. Even objects and items could be destroyed, and individual sprites would form from the outcome of it, making the environments even more dynamic in its presentation. The engine's magic also came from the familiarity and influence of the Doom engine. The experience that those games provided, getting it all over again, but with many new additions added into the mix that made the build engine seem superior at the time. However, like anything that you look at retrospectively, you begin seeing what the duct tape was hiding all this time. For starters, due to the limitations set upon by 2D mapping, it was very hard to create dynamic sectors that connected together, which is why you see maps like LA Meltdown from Duke Nukem 3D. The part where you're on the rooftop is actually separated from the main map itself. The people behind the map would implement a trick known as sector effectors, which would teleport the player without them realizing it while maintaining the immersion of a 3D world, including moving platforms as well as overlapping sectors, provided that they weren't seen at the same time, otherwise it would basically crash everything. To clarify on the topic of 3D, the build engine wasn't fully 3D in the same way as say the engine used for Quake, where it modeled true 3D environments along with the use of polygonal models. Games like Blood, Shadow Warrior, and Duke Nukem 3D operated on a 2D plane with an added height component, but the way it was implemented was done so in such a clever manner that it never really got in the way of the experience of build engine games while still providing a somewhat pseudo 3D experience. There were also other issues also related to the AI due to consistent hit scan landings from the enemies, leading to constant damage, enemies only being activated when they see you, and not like it was in Doom where you could also be detected by sound, like when you shoot a weapon for instance. The engine was known to be glitchy when it came to map making and modding, and especially gameplay, which made it less appealing for aspiring modders and map makers coming from Doom. The tool and editors for the build engine aren't quite as intuitive as for what's available for Doom today. To my knowledge, there really isn't anything like Ultimate Doom Builder or Slade for the build engine that's more accessible and dynamic in both performance and scale. You do, however, have Maps to 32, which is used for eDuke 32, a modern source port for the build engine games that also have a ton of improvements along with it. But even then, it's not as easy to work with in comparison to Doom's modern source ports, the most prominent one being GZ Doom. But you can still make some incredible maps and content with the build engine, provided that you're aware of its limitations and how the games are intertwined with the build engine's source code. Even so, what the engine accomplished was remarkable, and the source of its magic came from one person that wanted to improve and expand upon what Doom and Wolfenstein 3D had already done. And it really shows when you look at the holy trinity of the build engine games. The library of games, however, is a thing of mixed quality. The Witchhaven games were quite different from the others, and the medieval focus combat was a welcome change from a lot of the other shooters that emphasized guns. But it was very janky in its gameplay flow, and enemy attack animations were insanely fast with little to no delay whatsoever. The Tech War game is one of the more infamous titles and one that you're not missing out on, other than to learn what it tried to do. Power Slave was another game that was also really good, and even applied a Metroidvania-like structure to its level design, something that was unknown to shooters at that time. Power Slave and the rest of the other build engine games would be based on Duke Nukem 3D's code, rather than the direct engine it was originally based on. Several other titles up to the late 90s would also include Redneck Rampage, a truly terrible game that is janky and has horrible hit detection with its weapons, even when you're dead center with the crosshair. Its expansions don't fare that much better either. But it did have a good soundtrack and its hillbilly charm does give the game its own unique identity. The last few titles weren't particularly good and were generally terrible. Liquidator only had a Russian release due to its illegal use of the engine. Extreme Paint Brawl, NAM and World War 2 GI are considered the worst of the bunch and from what I've seen and played it really shows. At best they feel like Duke Nukem 3D mods and at worst they're half-baked shovelware. NAM was the only one of the bunch that I found some enjoyment in 
even in spite of the random mines that are near impossible to see due to the transparency between the foliage and mines colors blending together and the random napalm strikes that would blow you up, as well as this sniper rifle that only zooms in. Yeah, don't use it. If you want the best of what the build engine offers, then do yourself a solid and play Duke Nukem 3D, Shadow Warrior, and Blood. The years 96 and 97 were undoubtedly the sweet spots for the build engine's success, and how it not only encapsulated what Doom and Wolfenstein 3D did, but took it to even newer heights, bringing it even closer to 3D. Unfortunately though, the engine itself didn't reign for very long, and it was because of Quake. Quake was unprecedented in its display of true 3D environmental design, polygonal models layered from floors to walls and ceilings, enemies, player models, objects and weapons. Even with the build engine's eventual implementation of voxels, it eventually got washed over by the success of Quake, as well as the complete transition of 2D to 3D for FPS games. For this reason, there aren't a great deal of games made for the build engine, because just about every other company was immediately moving on to 3D shooters, as we would see from Quake 1 to this very day. It was a short and bittersweet end to the build engine's reign, and it ended the 90s with games that did live up to the standard of the three games that set the standard for the build engine. But it wasn't exactly the end for it either. In fact, a number of things over time had occurred throughout the 2000s, so that the build engine itself would live on. For starters, the source codes for both the engine and Duke Nukem 3D would be released. Modern source ports would be created like Build GDX, each game having their own GDX port, and most notably, eDuke32, which is the most used port and is often used for total conversion mod projects and maps using Duke Nukem 3D as its base. While it's not as prominent as Doom's modding scene, those that have persevered with utilizing the build engine and maps to 32 have made some genuinely amazing projects with it. And that's not all, and not many people know about this. There actually was a successor to the build engine released in 2007 called Build 2, made by Ken Silverman himself, alongside a student that he was mentoring at a summer camp. Upon looking at the demo, it included all of the features of the original build engine, while also displaying true 3D, full support for skyboxes, dynamic shadows and lighting, and sectors over sectors without limit counts. This would make Build 2 the 3D successor to the build engine, but in 2011 he lost interest in the project and it wouldn't be until 2018 he'd released the drafts for the engine. As far as I know, there haven't been any games made for it, and it's probably a result of there being other engines like Unity, Unreal and Godot that are far more powerful in their 3D rendering capabilities where the same retro experience could be replicated with more flexibility to boot. It would, however, be interesting to see a game made with this engine, to see more differences between it and the first build engine. Now, in terms of official game releases, we wouldn't see one using the build engine again until 2019, with the release of Iron Fury, published by 3D Realms, surprising enough, a game that was more or less a reaction to the rise of retro-inspired shooters, either in the form of 2.5D or low-poly late 90s 3D. Iron Fury in this case goes the route of 2.5D, built with eDuke32, the most up-to-date version of the build engine available, and frankly, it looks amazing for a build engine game, as you can see in the environments here. Its mix of voxels, room over room implementation and height usage brings along an experience that is very close in my opinion to the quality of the three golden games of the build engine. In 2022, another project would be released called AWOL, also made with eDuke32, designed to be more of a tactical based shooter where you have squad mates that can assist you. And like Iron Fury, it also has some genuinely impressive sprite work and map design. As for the AI, however, I've seen better, and it's been one of the build engine's weakest points for a long time, and it hasn't changed much in these two games. You can pick up Iron Fury for a pretty reasonable price, and AWOL is completely free, so there's no reason not to try it out. To get more build engine goodness, I would recommend AMC Squad, a total conversion mod set in the Duke Nukem universe, with a ton of content, multiple characters to play through, some genuinely impressive design and sprite work. Doom Throne is another one, another total conversion mod, but with medieval fantasy-like elements, plenty of content as well, and also features the Duke himself. Then finally, there's an awesome mod for Doom called Nobody Told Me About Id. Now this is cheating because it's not built with the build engine, but with Jeezy Doom. 
However, its design philosophy, its use of level design and geometry and gameplay is reminiscent of the build engine. In fact, you could even say that this is the Doom 2 that should have been. And depending on what wads you play, you may even get unique weapons and monsters to play with. I would highly recommend this mod. And so, the build engine lives on, in the guise of its successors like eduke 32 its large and dedicated community full of people that continue to support some of the greatest FPSs ever made like Shadow Warrior, Duke Nukem 3D, and Blood. In the 90s, the differences between the build engine and the Doom engine were quite significant due to its improvements in graphics, level geometry, sectors, and 3D immersion. But nowadays, the gap between them is about an inch apart because of source ports like GZ Doom that has improved and expanded upon the Doom engine, even being able to create 3D games like the Turtle Chaos conversion mod. The build engine was also, unfortunately, something that was overshadowed by the presence of Quake and the games that followed suit with it, committing to full 3D gaming. The engine's legacy lives on throughout the retro FPS scene that has been booming since 2016, through games that take the best of both worlds from both the Doom engine and the build engine. The build engine showed what was possible with 2.5D shooters, how it could go further, creating a ripple effect that would also influence the GZ Doom port, the source of so many amazing maps and mods for Doom. The build engine is just as important, and the FPS scene would not have been the same without it. I'll provide some resources regarding the engine down in the description as well as eduke32, which is what I would advise using if you want to develop anything with the build engine. Thank you for watching.